let's get rolling. If you're ready to go, say, let's go. Let's go. Fantastic. I'm considering taking you with me. Okay, let's talk about setting goals. A subject that altered my life forever. It was just unbelievable. I hadn't known my mentor, Mr. Show, very long until one day he said, Mr. Ronsch, let me see your current list of goals. He said, I've had a lot of experience and I've been out here for a while. And he said, let's go over them and maybe I can really give you some good ideas. And I said, I don't, I don't have a list. He said, well, he said, if you don't have a list of your goals, he said, I can guess your bank balance within a few hundred dollars, which he did. That got my attention. I said, you mean my bank balance would be a lot bigger if I learned how to set goals? He said, drastically bigger. That got my attention, so I finally said, hey, I want to learn how to set goals. It is a fantastic skill to develop how to design your own future. So make the note, life best lived is life by design, not by accident, not just, you know, walking through the day careening from wall to wall and managing to survive. You know, that's okay. But if you can start giving your life dimensions and design and color and objectives and purpose, the results can be absolutely staggering. Key phrase, here's a chance now to use your imagination. Because the imagination builds cities. Imagination conquers disease. Imagination develops a career. Imagination sets up a relationship. Imagination is where all tangible values and intangible values begin in the imagination. So what you've got to learn to do is use this powerful resource. Now, sometimes all by ourselves, it's a little difficult sort of to get it going. That's why a little workshop like we're going to do today is sometimes very helpful. When someone does a little coaching and says, how about this, this niche? You say, I never thought about that. That ought to be easy to do. And the first thing you know, you're going. All the stuff I've done, this is not any new stuff. You know, you could have thought of all this in your lifetime. But in a concentrated way, like two days, if somebody comes along and says, how about, jot this down, you say, yes, I can understand that. I thought about that and I sort of dismissed it. That's why two days is so valuable or one day or whatever, a seminar so that somebody takes you through some things that you could have thought of by yourself. You could have done your own research, but why not capsulize an event like this for a couple of days and then go through it and let it stimulate you to widen your life, whether it be your career or a relationship or financial independence or a project that you're working on, whatever that is, this kind of time is so valuable. And it's true, it's why, why the cassettes are so valuable. Brian Tracy is right. It's called University on Wheels. Turn your car into a mobile classroom and just get this stuff, right? When your hands are busy and your mind is free, you know, why not utilize that time to learn another subject, to pick up another skill, to be reminded of another important value in your life that being so busy has got you distracted. It, it's a unique way to do that, right? Not just to sell cassette tapes. But because it's a great way to pick up the extra learning and increase the momentum of your upward curve of self-development and uh, self-education. And uh, that's why that is so important. But now, tapping this resource of the imagination and thinking about your future, thinking about tomorrow, as early as tomorrow or the rest of the day, and thinking on out the rest of the year, on into the next century, on into the early years of the next century. A workshop like we're about to do helps call your attention to that so you can use your imagination to start prospecting for the future, what could be possible for you. So let's go through some things. Here's number one. We're affected by five things primarily. Number one, the environment, which affects us all. It doesn't hurt to make a simple contribution to the environment. Pick up a piece of trash and throw it in the receptacle. If everybody did that, what a better world it would be. A little contribution that, that costs nothing. I finally learned how simple it was to turn out the lights before I left my hotel room, to make a contribution. 
How much time does it take? A fraction of a second. Saves a little more electricity. What if everybody did it? Maybe the cost of a room might come down. If everybody contributed and everybody said, well, the hotel's going to benefit. Here's the answer to that. What difference does it make? What difference does it make if it's easy for you to make a contribution if you don't make it? Say, no, I leave all the lights on. You know, it's the hotel, not me anyway. Then you have the wrong attitude. The attitude is, if it's easy for me to conserve, if it's easy for me to do something that becomes my daily and yearly and life routine, what it does for my psyche, what it does for my self-esteem, even though it's quiet self-esteem, it's not publicized, it's not something you're recognized for, you know, in front of an audience of 10,000, but it's something that you recognize, here's the kind of person I am, whether anyone ever sees it or not. Here's the things I do that helps to accelerate my own self-esteem. I don't need public recognition. I don't need a, a pin for it. You know, I don't need a Congressional Medal of Honor. I have enough dignity to give myself honor for the things I do that make a contribution, whether anyone else does it or not. Now, it's easy to say, well, no one you know, turns out the lights. Say, no one but me. I'm one of those rare individuals. And that doesn't have to be publicly recognized. Just so in your heart and soul, you know you are one of those rare individuals that does these little things. So we're affected by the environment. Next, we're affected by events. Some small, some big, some personal, some national, some global. The hurricane. What's the name? Dennis. Heading for the east coast of America. Looks like it might turn and go north, but events affect us all. How about the missile crisis? Some of us go back that far, right? Some of you got gray hair like me. Russia tries to sneak their missiles into Cuba. Kennedy finds out about it and calls and says, Nikita, John Kennedy on the phone. You can't put your missiles in Cuba. Nikita Khrushchev said, Mr. President, you're young at this game. This is Nikita Khrushchev. This is Russia you're talking to. We can put our missiles wherever we darn well please. Wow, that started it. Next call. Mr. Khrushchev, sir, not in Cuba, 90 miles from America. Khrushchev says, well, Mr. Kennedy, I hate to inform you, but the ships are already on the way with the missiles. Next call, Mr. Khrushchev, John Kennedy. Sir, I must inform you, and you must hear me clearly. We will not let your ships arrive. Now it's getting tough. People are starting to dig bomb shelters, right, when they heard this scenario. Next call, Nikita Khrushchev says, Mr. Kennedy, I promise you, sir, if you touch those ships, you've got war. Last call. John Kennedy says, Mr. Chairman, please, sir, I promise you, if it is war, Russia will cease to exist. There won't be any more Russia. Last call. And Nikita decided he better take his missiles and go back home. And the world breathed a little easier. Right? Those kind of events affect us all. But they're small events and daily events and family events and national events and community events. We're all affected by the events. Here's number three. We're affected by knowledge. Whatever we know or don't know. It's a good phrase to jot down if you haven't done it before in one of my seminars. Ignorance is not bliss. Ignorance is tragedy. Ignorance is devastation. Ignorance creates lack. Ignorance creates disease. Ignorance will shorten your life. Ignorance will empty your life, leave you with the husks, nothing to account for. Ignorance. Ignorance is not bliss. Here's another good one to note. What you don't know will hurt you. What you don't know will tragically affect your life. What you don't know will leave your life empty. What you don't know will leave you without a love affair or a relationship. What you don't know. So, we're all affected by knowledge, whether we know, whether we don't know. That's why you've got to read the books. 
key phrase, the book you don't read won't help. Next, we're affected by results. Whatever results you're currently getting, the harvest of your own decisions, those are your current results. We're affected by those, whether it's financial results or personal results or social results. We're all affected by results. Disciplines undone in the future give us poor results. Discipline managed well gives us good results. Here's number five. We're affected by our dreams, our vision of the future. Next key. You want to make sure that the greatest pull on your life is the pull of the future. Some people live in the past and let their life be continually pulled and influenced by the past. And yes, we must remember the past and review the past to make it useful to invest in the future. But here's the key. Make sure that the greatest pull on your life is the pull of the future. Now, if you're skimpy on your dreams, if you're skimpy on your objectives and your purposes, if that isn't very well planned, then it doesn't pull very hard. Then you have more of a tendency to be pulled by the past or to be pulled apart by events or circumstances or to be pulled apart by distractions. So in order to save yourself from being pulled apart by distractions or pulled back to the past, you want to now start really designing the future so that the greatest part of your attention and focus and pull, like a magnet, pulls you forward into the future to accomplish your goals. But if you're weak in learning to set goals, if you haven't really worked on this that we're going to work on, then that is a solution you need to consider. Goals are like a magnet. They pull, and the stronger they are, and the more purposeful they are, the bigger they are, the more unique they are, the stronger they pull. If you have excellent goals and high dreams, here's what they also do. They pull you through. Pull you through all kinds of down days, down seasons. They pull you through a winter of discontent. They pull you through distraction on every side that says, look here, look here, look here. Strong, powerful dreams like a magnet pull you through that. Strong dreams and goals pull you through a disaster. Some people get swallowed by the disaster because they have nothing on the other side of the disaster to pull them through. A bad day can almost overwhelm you if you don't have something really purposeful to go for at the other side of that day. At the other side of the difficult time, at the other side of the down time. If you've got plenty out there, to attract and pull, it'll pull you through all these things. And very little of it will attach itself to you. You'll be able to get through some of the most difficult times if you have this spectacular vision ahead of you of where you're going and what you're going to accomplish. Getting through will be easy or easier. So learning to set goals, it is an incredible experience. Once I learned it, it transformed my life forever. Being here today is an accomplishment of my goals. When I travel around the world and sit on an airplane, I say, I dreamed about this one day. I used to go to the airport and watch the planes fly away, and I said, one of these days, I'll be on one of those planes. I dreamed about it. I dreamed about the other side of the world. I'd never been to Italy, but I dreamed about it. I'd never been to, to uh, Israel, but I dreamed about it. I'd never been to South Africa, but I dreamed about it. Never been to Australia, but I dreamed about it. And sure enough, step by step and country by country and flight by flight, I started checking them off my list. It was the most exhilarating feeling. Powerful to set those goals, reach out there into the future, design something to the best of your ability, refine it as you go, tear it up periodically if you want to, set a whole new list. It's your life. It's your future. But now I would like to do it in a very simple, easy manner that you can follow. And we're going to have to sort of push on through this workshop because we just don't have the time to make it very extensive. But I want it to serve as a model so that you can use it for the future to pass on to your children. Or if you've got a little group that you train and teach or your management and salespeople, you can use this with others. So what I'm going to go through with you here is sort of a model. Sort of if I rush you just a little bit on getting through this model, at least I will leave you with the model that you can use later. And not only use later, but use later to pass on to someone else in some manner. So having laid this background now, here's what I want you to do. Get a fresh piece of paper or a new page in your journal. 
And this is called now the workshop. And on this workshop now, I want you to write down the question and then do the exercise. Write down the question and then do the exercise. First question. List what five things have you accomplished that you're already proud of? What five things have you already accomplished that you're proud of? That is the question, my question to you. And now that you've written down the question, I want you to just make that list of five things that you can think of that you've already accomplished that you're proud of. Whatever it is, just so it's important to you. It doesn't have to be important to the world or important to me. Just so it's important to you. I graduated third in my high school class in my senior year. I was proud of that. Graduated third. Now, it's not, there's only three. It's not that good. I did a speaking tour once with David Chilton, who wrote The Wealthy Barber, and Mark Tewksbury, who was a gold medal winner in Canada. And uh, that was on Mark Tewksbury's list of five things I've already accomplished that I'm proud of. Winning the gold medal in Barcelona. So what have you accomplished? What five things have you accomplished that you're proud of? Now, primarily what this is for is to, you know, give you credit for what you've already accomplished. Shelf said to me, Mr. Owen, you've already been setting goals. You know, you've already gone for something and you've achieved it. But you've probably done it haphazardly. You haven't done it with a real plan in mind. And you've accomplished some things. Now, if you start deliberately doing it, can you imagine how you can multiply the effect by 5, by 10, by 20, by 100? I finally got the message. So, first of all, he wanted to make sure I got credit for the things that I had already accomplished, especially in my own mind. You know, whether it's an accomplishment to someone else doesn't matter now. Just so you recognize it for yourself, a list of those five things that I've already accomplished. When you work with kids on doing this little workshop, right, this will give them some credit. They'll feel good now about going through the rest of the program simply because you want to recognize what they've already accomplished on their own. You know, they haven't been through a class on setting goals. You know, they haven't been through a workshop. But, hey, we've all done maybe some pretty spectacular things. I wish we knew all the stories in this room. If we knew all the stories in this room, I'll bet you we'd, some of them we'd be dazzled of what some people in this room have already accomplished. Yes, they're sitting here in the seminar. Yes, we're about to do the goals workshop. But hey, plenty of you have done some outstanding things that's given you self-esteem and self-confidence. I congratulate you for that. Now that you've done that little workshop, here's the second question. This is going to take some time now. What do you want in the next... 10 years. What do you want in the next 10 years? Now, under this, what do you want in the next 10 years? That is the question. I want you to make a list of at least 50 items. Now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to just write as fast as you can. Don't give any much detailed thought to it of what you want in the next 10 years. And just let your mind run free. Now, also remember this. This is not what you think you can get. This is what you want. If it all fell into place and you could have everything you wanted in the next 10 years, what would you take? Right. If somebody promised you can have anything you want in the next 10 years, what do you want? I want you to approach it that way because it's not important to think, what do I think I can get? I want you to now think about what you want in the next 10 years. So we're going to take a little time now for you to make that list of 50 items. Just And put them one under the other, not side by side, but one under the other because we're going to do something with this list when you finish. One under the other. And abbreviate, you know, wherever possible so you can just put more items on the list. What do you want in the next 10 years?
Everything from places to go, to investments to make, to education for your children. Personal things, business things, everything. Now, some of these things need to be tomorrow, need to be this year, need to be next year, then 10 years on out there. Between now and the next 10 years, what would really do it for you? Everything you can think of. Skills you want to learn. Languages. residences you want to acquire, a ranch in Montana, a cabin in the mountains, everything you can think of, from small to large. A list of the places you want to visit. Revisit. Experiences you want to have. Fly the Concord. Bungee jump. Maybe something maybe you haven't done, but just put it on your list if it rings a bell. Write a song, write a book. Write a poem. Ten years. Benevolence goals. Right? Projects you want to support. Money you want to be able to give. Star in a movie, play in a rock and roll band, what would give you the most incredible life the next 10 years? A new wardrobe, a new look. Start a new family. Larry King. You know, he has breakfast where I have breakfast at Nate Nails. We've had a chance to talk a few times. He just start, he's starting a brand new family. I don't know how old he is next to God. I mean, he's getting pretty old, but it's unbelievable. Jerry Lewis, what, 72 or 73, and he's got a little girl? Danny's her name. Jerry Lewis, a little girl. Now, maybe that wouldn't do it for you, but you know, what, what would do it for you? What would give you the greatest satisfaction, pleasure, joy, live an unbelievable life? What would that list be in the next 10 years? You know, habits you want to change, health you want to acquire, and remember if you've been to my other seminars, right, a little revenge I talk about on your goal list. I had some of that when I first started doing these goals, a little revenge, people who said I couldn't do it, couldn't wait to get my new car, drive it up on their lawn. Satisfaction. Budget finance used to harass me. I finally got the money put together, put it in this 
in small bills in a big briefcase. Walked into this guy's office one day, dumped this pile of money all over his desk, out of my briefcase. I said, count it. Turned around, walked out, never asked for a receipt. Someday you just got to bury somebody in the money. Satisfaction. David the king said, God prepares my table for me. What a scene. David said, God prepares my table for me. But that's not the end of the story. What's the rest of it? Got some scholars here. God prepares a table before me. What? In the presence of my enemies. See, you've got to put that on your list someday. The new translation reads, in their face. <laughs> Isn't that an incredible scene? In the presence of my enemies. Let them look at this scene. Whatever it is, satisfaction. My Japanese friend, Toro Ikeda, right here, San Jose, years ago, put on his first list, a Caucasian gardener. I said... <laughs> Go Toro. It's so good. So what would do it for you? Upstairs made, downstairs made. Chauffeur, cook. A cook, you can't believe. Wouldn't take that much to have a full-time cook. Take care of everything so you can devote your time to other things. If, if that pleases you. You know, Mark Hughes, my friend, has got this mansion and all this help, and that's not my style. Right? You drink a cup of coffee, you can't even set it down. Somebody comes and takes it away. That's too much help for me. I, I don't need that much help. That, it suits Mark. So. But what would do it for you? Learn a new craft. Develop a whole new career. Greatly advance your present career. In the next 10 years, just keep making the list as many things as you can think of. Little things, insignificant to someone else, important to you. One of my goals was to have a residence in each of the four seasons. Spring here, summer here, autumn here, winter here. If you could have whatever you wanted to make your life unbelievably unique in the next 10 years, what would you take? Somebody said, you can have anything you want in the next 10 years. What is it? But you can't have it if you can't think it, if you can't, you know, describe it, if, you know, if you can't put it on paper. The ancient script says what? To the believer, everything's possible. Remember now, some close at hand, some not far away, some on out there. This is over 10 years now, over 10 years. That's a big chunk of time. How many chunks of 10 do we have? About 10. 10 chunks of 10, that's about it. Of course, with what's happening in science and technology and nutrition, you know, we may get that other... 20, 30 years before long, 110, 20, 30. Mm -hmm. I read in scripture back when they lived to be 800, 900 years old. I don't know how come I come in this, in these generations where we get shortchanged. If I have a chance, I'm going to complain. <laughs> how come they got 800, I got 80? That doesn't sound fair. But anyway, I may not have a chance to ask, but if I do get a chance, I'm going to ask. But in this brief life we have, we want to fill it up with as much progress and achievement as possible. 
not just for ourselves, but to reach out and touch everyone we possibly can. Okay. Does anybody have 50 items yet? Okay, we're doing pretty good. Another couple of minutes now. Because you can put a lot more items after we do this workshop. You'll see where, you know, you don't have to stop where I stop. If you're doing it and you've got plenty of time, you just you just go on and on. Keep coaching. Say, what about this? Oh, somebody says, oh, yeah. And they start that. And you say, what about this? And say, I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, I'd like some of that, too. Just, that's what the workshop is for. Stimulate your imagination. Ten years. It's amazing. See, kids by now have about nine pages is already full. Adults are something else. You, you got to squeeze this stuff out of adults. Kids will have on their list things you don't even know exist, right? Okay. Put a little star there now, which means continue this later. You don't have to just be shortchanged on this list. I mean, this list can go on and on and on. And if you're working this workshop and you've got plenty of time, you just, you know, give it plenty of time till everybody's pretty thoroughly, you know, ready now with this list. Now here's what I want you to do with this list. I want you to go through the list now, one item at a time, write down the list. And I want you to give each item a one, a three, a five, or a ten by saying that's about a one-year goal, that's about a three, that's about a five, that's about a ten. I want you to look at each item, write down the list, and give it a one, three, five, or ten. Look at each item and say that's about a one, that's about a three, that's about a five, that's about a ten. doesn't have to be exact, just somewhere near. Or even if you just guess, I'm, I'm guessing that that looks like about three years. This looks like about five. This is within the next year. This is ten. One, three, five, ten. going to be so valuable. What's going to be valuable now is when you teach it. You'll learn even more when you teach it. One, three, five, ten. 